Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Woodstock, Georgia, it's time for Cherokee Business Radio. Now, here's your host. Welcome to Cherokee Business Radio. Stone Payton here with you this afternoon, and you are in for a real treat. Please join me in welcoming to the broadcast with Alma Coffee, Mr. Harry Hutchins. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Stone. Thank you so much for having me. It is an absolute delight to have you on the show. You and I had a chance to visit a week or so ago, and I began to learn a little bit about your work and your product. But if you would for us, would you share with our listeners kind of mission, purpose? What are you guys out there really trying to do for folks? Yeah, Stone, thank thank you for that tee-up, and and thank you to all listeners tuning in um, and and spending your time uh, with us. But Alma was founded about 2018, about two years ago by my wife and I, and then, then my father-in-law as well. And we are located just, just a little north of Woodstock at Holly Springs. That's where we have our coffee roastery. That's where we do a lot of our distribution, sales for e-commerce, et cetera. But we really, the main differentiator is that we are fifth generation coffee farmers. We have our own coffee farms down in Central America and Honduras for anyone who's ever gone to visit there through, you know, through mission work or through cruises. It's a it's a an amazing place and it's it's one that produces a lot of just really really good coffee and that's where we get our coffee from we bring it up um, we we farm it ourselves you know pick it harvest it process it bring it up to the U S bring it over to Holly Springs and in um, right there is where we roast it all and and then distribute it throughout um, North Georgia and through our e-commerce site um, nationwide so that's that's really what we're all about. And then, you know, I'm working for the value side. We're really built on three key pillars, improving lives, you know, sustainability and everything we do and produce an extraordinary coffee. Um, so very, very simple um, business and product with coffee, but has a huge, huge impact. How in the world does someone find themselves in the coffee business? Was there some critical catalytic moment in your history that, made you um, navigate that turn and get in the coffee business? What's the, what's the backstory for you personally, man? Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's a great question. So, so where I got into it was, you know, I, I kind of fell into it um, myself. It was, you know, from my wife's family. Um, that's the relationship to the coffee farms that are still in our family um, and where we still operated. But it all started about two years ago when my wife and I, we were, you know, high school sweethearts went up to Chicago for, for university, started our corporate careers over there. We were accountants. Um, and we saw the opportunity in, in the coffee industry is most of the coffee you drink, you know, stone, um, today, many times will hit six to seven middlemen. Most, most coffee around. There's, there's a lot of middlemen just in the country of origin that are, um, you know, obviously, uh, increasing the price and many times coffee, it's a quantity game, not a quality game. So what they're doing is making mixing coffee. Um, and what we saw was there's an injustice going on between these middlemen and then how they're treating the farmers. Many of these farmers being, um, you know, high up in rural mountains, may have not even speaking Spanish, maybe a dialect of, you know, a Mayan dialect. And so really, really taken advantage of. And so we, we saw that there's the opportunity to do something called direct trade working directly with these farmers or even, even our own farm and bringing that coffee up and serving it to consumers like yourself. So you're going to get a much better quality cup of coffee and then a much more um, ethically sourced um, cup of coffee. So when we saw that, that was, you know, our, our, our light bulb moment to say, Hey, there's, you know, there's a need for this. People are drinking coffee every single day. Um, actually about 64% of Americans drink coffee uh, daily, 74% weekly. And so we said, Hey, this is a great opportunity not only bring good coffee, but coffee that, that does good and has a real impact um, in a community that we, you know, our, our family is still down there. So that, that really was that catalyst. So what is the journey of a, of a coffee bean? And you can leave, it sounds like six or seven of those middlemen out of this <laughs> description because it sounds mm-hmm. like you've streamlined it. But I, I would be really interested to understand from is, is, is it actually referred to as a cherry from the thingy on the bush? <laughs> All, can you do yeah. my walking us through that? <laughs> yeah, so that's that another great question. So the way coffee, and most people, I mean, we have, uh, before COVID and the pandemic, we used to have a lot of tours and, and people would come on in and it was always so so fun and 
um, and cool for me to see whenever their face, face kind of lit up with, oh, like that's it doesn't just show up as as this ground powder or as a as a brown <laughs> bean, but you know in the grocery store. But it really starts out uh, as what you said. Stone is is a coffee cherry, um, and before that, you know, alma actually means soul in Spanish. The idea that we put our whole heart and soul into the coffee from the moment it's planted to the time it takes to get up to you know being able to harvest it. So that takes about four years, and then everything is hand picked. You know, we do that for better quality, and that inefficiency allows us to hire more people and bring on more more folks um, and provide more jobs down in Honduras. But that's the process. Of, you know, four years of TLC, getting the plant up from becoming a seedling to starting to pick it. And then every year after that, you can still keep on picking it. But once it's off the tree in that cherry form, then there's a lot of, there's a lot of processing about a three to four month timeline before going from a cherry to after some processing, eventually we're getting these two seeds, there's two seeds per cherry. And those seeds are what we call green bean is eventually what is going to be brought up into the U.S. over to our roastery in Holly Springs, and that's what roasted. That's what's roasted up. Um, so that's you know, in a nutshell, uh, you know, a four and a half year journey um, summed up in, in forty five seconds. So uh, <laughs> it, it, there's a big supply chain, and a lot of people really relying on it. But it sounds like you chose uh, you and your wife and, and her family. You chose to kind of go out on the limb a little bit, disrupt the traditional supply chain mm-hmm. it, it, um in in inject some efficiencies uh but also it sounds to me like inject some soul <laughs> in, in into mm-hmm. this whole exactly. process exactly. some alma <laughs> so so some alma what was i mean that had to be a little bit intimidating a little bit um scary at first did everybody in the family embrace this idea or did you guys really have to think it through and plan it out? And was there some gnashing of teeth before you jumped in there and, and disrupted like this? Yes, yeah, it's, it's embraced now, but at the, at the beginning, so so I came from a, a, a big four um, CPA firm. My wife did as well. And um, so we had, we had a great career ahead of us. Um, we worked so hard through college to get our accounting and, you know, our accounting degrees, um, the CPA, et cetera to have these great jobs. And after about two years, we're just like, you know what, we want to do something different. So, um, that was, you know, the risk factor, you know, that was the big, uh, big one that was really kind of, um, you know, my father-in-law had a, had a great corporate career and now he's doing coffee farming. He's like, guys, don't leave, don't do this. You guys got a great career stay. Um, but eventually we were able to convince him and kind of turn him around to, to, um, to the idea, but seeing our passion, I think that, that really helped as well. And now, you know, two years later, um, it, we couldn't be happier with the decision we made. So it definitely is a hard one. And, and to take on the role of, you know, being that that generation to break out of, you know, Honduras and, and break out of uh, just selling there locally and vertically integrate was a scary one, but uh, but wouldn't regret a, a thing. OK, so cut to present day. You are mm-hmm. um, you're you're based at not not far from from Woodstock up the road in Holly Springs. You have a facility, right? Yes. Okay. And, and at this facility, are you, do people come to this facility and, and buy product or is that more of like a, the, the factory, almost the warehouse, the, the, the uh, prep facility, and then it's primarily a, an e-commerce business or how do you get the product to the consumer? You know, it's a little bit of a hybrid. We actually have a lot of folks that still come to our, our roastery, even though it is primarily the manufacturing space. They come on in and we and we welcome them in uh, and, and get them uh, what they need. We definitely always tell people, hey, you know, order online first because the one cool thing, Stone, is when, when you come see us, you're going to see that we don't have carry really any inventory. It is any roasted inventory. Whenever it's ordered, that's when it's freshly roasted wow. and, and sent out to, to you through e-commerce. So we definitely have a lot of people that come on in. Uh, but primarily, you know, we service, you know, online um, through our website, www.myalmacoffee.com or through many of our local partners um, where you can go over and, and go to their small business um, and check them out and, and um, support them as well. So some great places in the Woodstock, like Reformation Brewery, um, Pie Bar, the Woodstock Visitor Center. Uh, and then throughout Cherokee County, you'll find other places that would have our coffee uh, that, folks can go on in and, and get a bag for themselves. 
Well, I think that's fantastic that I can go to Reformation Brewery or the Pie Bar or some of these other uh, places, and I thought that was likely the case. I'm sure you have plenty of individual consumers, a growing following. Mm -hmm. But I also wondered, um, and I'm sure the answer is yes, but I'd like to hear a little bit more about it. You know, a company like Business Radio X, you know, we're like, we're this talk show. One of the things that we do for guests who come in studio, uh, I just did a show a couple hours ago, and the guest walked out with the Business Radio X you know, official talk show mug, right? <laughs> but, mm, so mm-hmm. I wonder how cool it would be if if we somehow maybe provided, you know, I don't know, like a little pack of bean or coffee with that mug, or if if maybe I don't know for holidays or something special, I could see um, having a corporate program, if you will, like businesses purchasing coffee. Is that some of your uh, is that some of of your business model as well? Yeah, Stone, you you, uh, you you completed the pitch for me, but actually we do we do have that. We do have a corporate program in place that actually many businesses have taken advantage of, where we'll actually you know create a custom card, send it out to um, a client list that that they provide, and what it's simple as as it's just as simple as just providing what the custom card would say. You know, hey, you know this might be from hey um, Bob from this bank. Um, I wanted to provide you with some great cup of coffee. This is from a local business, yada, 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 cut, you know, et cetera, like that. And then we can send it out. Um, we'll mail it out for them. So it's actually a pretty cool link. If you go online and search Alma Coffee Corporate Program, check it out on our website. We got some pretty cool teasers that'll explain it a lot better than, than what I can do now. Um, so, so that's, that's what we do. So holidays are coming up. Coffee is a great gift. Everyone, everyone drinks it. I'll be, I did not realize that. Uh, so it's going to, it's, it, that's going to sound like I was trying to tee that up for you. I was just thinking that I could go and buy a bunch of, uh, bags of coffee, you know, like it's some sort of corporate program. And then I would bring them back and have to pack them. You're telling me once no, we get we something set up, you. you do that for us. You're like, uh, wow. Mm-hmm. Now that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So really low, really low minimums. And then even if you're just sending it out to a friend, you know, we have, we have a really yeah. great site. So when you go on and order your coffee, and as you're checking out, we actually have a little little area where it says, hey, if you want to add a message, type it in here. You can type that in. We'll print that out, put that in your coffee bag. So when whenever your your friend or family member gets it, um, they'll really be thinking of you. So no, you, you um, unintentionally teed that one up, up perfectly as to, as to what, <laughs> some of the stuff we do. <laughs> hey, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, okay, so in, in your specific case, you wouldn't even be in this business or at least not with this specific business, Alma, if it weren't for your wife and dude, you're in business with your wife. Um, <laughs> that's got to have mm-hmm. its rewards and its challenges. Talk a little bit about that dynamic, if you don't mind, and, and we'll try not to get you in trouble over it. But I know that there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there who listen to our work and, and, and several of them may very well consider working together as a couple, and uh, I don't know, maybe you can save them some heartache and give them some tips on, you know, working with well, you know, family and and your and your spouse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I work with you know my spouse, my father-in-law. I mean, it's it's definitely a tough one. I will not sugarcoat that one. It could be tough, but it's one of the most rewarding things you know out there. The amount of trust, the amount of just um, just respect I have for my wife and, and, and my father-in-law just working together and seeing a whole different side that I did not think I would get to see when I was, you know, saying I do to her and stuff. So it is one of the, it is one of the best things, but it is a, it is a hard one. One of the things when we really started, we really struggled with, you know, working together, um, you know, how to manage tasks, how to segregate some of our duties. That was a really mm-hmm. tough one, but you know, from the beginning, it's still something we're, you know, I'm always trying to learn, but, you know, from the beginning, we really try to segregate different tasks, different business lines. Um, we try not to step on each other's toes, and then whoever's business line it is, that's that's who gets the final say. So that helps out a ton. But it's one of those things that I'm we're always still um, working on. But it just takes just really, really good communication. Um, but at the end of the day, it, it is one of the most rewarding things to be able to work with my wife, and then definitely with my father-in-law as well. So, have you guys found yourselves having to to pivot any, adapt any, as we kind of battle with this, um, you know, all the, the craziness with the pandemic. And, and for those of you who are listening to this show, uh, Harry and I are talking now, we're, we're within a few days after the presidential election, we're neck deep in the pandemic. So if you're not listening to this live and you're listening to this in 2021, you know, 2024, 
um, that's the that's the situation that, that Harry and I find ourselves in as we're in this conversation. So that's the context. But uh, yeah, given um, this the the pandemic, the COVID, the, all that has that had any impact on on your world at all? Man, so uh, you know the amount of pivoting we we have done, you know, it, it, it's crazy. We're spinning around circles, pivoting so much. I mean. Back in April, when, when this happened, to a lot of the listeners out there, if you had a business and going through the pandemic, you know how much how much changed. And, you know, if your business is still alive, you know, at this point, I mean, just kudos to you because it's it was tough. We were, as I said, we primarily do a lot of e-commerce business. You know, at the beginning of this, we had a website that was just a website just to be there because it seemed like everyone else had a website. It really wasn't producing. We had, we had our own you know, little coffee shop as well. Um, we were doing wholesale. So it was, you know, that was our business model was that retail front. And then all of a sudden pandemic, pandemic hit, shut down our, our cafe. We really couldn't do, do anything there. And then we just saw that, Hey, people are going to be working from home. Um, and we need to be able to, to give them coffee. People are still consuming coffee, whether in a pandemic a recession or even a booming economy, but we just did not have the means to get it to them. So we really pivoted to upgrading our, our website um, upgrading a, a subscription plan that we had that we would offer to people that if they wanted coffee every week, every two weeks, every month, we would send them however much they want. Um, so that's another cool thing. If you go check out our, our subscription club right there. Um, but point being, it, it, you know, in the pandemic, coming up with new ideas, becoming innovative, being and, and having to really adapt to the changes of where your customers are going to be. Because all of a sudden they weren't going to, you know, other businesses that were serving our coffee. They weren't going to our cafe. Um, and so, you know, we just, we really had to change and adapt. And I mean, it, in April, it went from all revenues just immediately ceasing down to zero to now, you know, today still the lights are, are on, payroll being done. Um, and so we've, we've really been happy with how, how we pivoted. Well, congratulations on, on making those adjustments. And that is, you know, those are the companies, the entrepreneurs who survive. Given all that, do you have now or do you find yourself, you believe you will return to possibly setting your sights on continuing to grow? Or are you just going to try to ride this thing out right now or have you decided? No, it's, it's always, I mean, it's always going to be looking to grow with any business. I mean, it's always got to just how to, what's the next thing as soon as, you know, as soon as the, you know, the world opens up again, you know, people are going to be buying coffee, maybe back to the way they used to be, which might not be online or they may stay online. We hope, we hope they definitely do, but we'd love to have, you know, that retail fund to, to be able to um, interact with people, show them, show them what the process is, show them the, the long journey it takes. And then just to kind of, just to kind of be a more of a community presence. I mean, it's one, it's one thing that's really cool about coffee. It's really something that people, you know, start their day with, go through their day with, we'd love to be that person that, you know, people know, Hey, this is where I'm getting not only fresh coffee, good tasting coffee, um, but something that really makes a difference. So they always looking to grow soon. Well, let's go back to that for a moment. This idea of community and soul and really genuinely being invested in the, the happiness and success of other, other people you and I have had a conversation before we ever came on air a week or two ago. So I, I know these things to be true about you. So I, um, I don't, I don't think in the space of this conversation, we can attack with any great depth hmm. and breadth the why, but I would be interested in the, in the how, uh, like, do you, do you guys sit around and think about like tangibly, tactically, okay, gang, what can we be doing to, invest in the community, you know, this year, this quarter, what are some things we can be doing to help other business people? I mean, do you guys actually have those conversations with each other? We definitely do. And Stone, I, I would want to actually, uh, you know, expand that community, not only just into the local Cherokee area, or at least where Holly Springs is, or even Georgia, I want to expand that even farther. For example, you know, we just went through in, in Central America, a devastating hurricane, Hurricane Eta. Mm. And we are the the farm. Thankfully, is, is not sustained too much damage, but a lot of the roads, um, a lot of property for a lot of folks that we know is uh, were damaged. And so, the one thing we we immediately set, stepped up to do um, was to you know start to go fund me to to help pay for materials and supplies. We are the one of the few places that have a backhoe, a a bulldozer. So we're putting those out into the roads and, and making sure that we can clean up and, and clear what 
um, what devastation was left behind, but we definitely need some help, especially because, you know, it's, it's not like the U S where a tree falls down into the road and then a couple hours later, it's already been chopped up on the side. Um, <laughs> yeah. it, it is just not, it is just not the case, not in a third world country. And many times we have to be the ones to clean it up ourselves. And, and this is just kind of our way and effort to, to amplify what we really could do if it was by ourselves. So, but th- that's a great question. So that's just one great example of what we do. Um, especially in, in times of need, just like this. Well, well, I'm glad I asked because it, it helped me remember, yes, you are genuinely helping the, you know, Cherokee County in Georgia and, you know, like for somebody like Business Radio X to team up with you to send coffee to clients and studio partners, all that mm-hmm. is really cool. But the impact you must be having and the rewarding feeling you must get from really serving a farmer in the Honduras or someone in that community who can't get to where they need to go or helping them make a reasonable amount of money on their labor. That man, that's got to feel great. No, I mean, yeah, it definitely does. I mean, that's really what we started this business on. It was that idea of improving lives. Um, and this is, you know, this is it firsthand. And this is, you know, when, when times have, have called us to step up. And that was exactly what, you know, what we want to do and, and make sure we're doing. Well, the next conversation you and I have, Harry, is going to be over a marvelous cup of Alma coffee. But before we leave and try to make that happen, what is the best way for our listeners to get connected with Alma? And I realize there may be several connection points, so feel free to, to share them to share them all, whether it's from a business standpoint, consumer, on-site, online. Uh, let's just make sure that we leave our listeners with all of the ways to connect with you guys. I love it. And actually, just to thank everyone for, for tuning in to Cherokee Business Radio. We've actually, you know, we want you to enjoy a cup of coffee. Give it a try. Let me know what you think. Um, we actually have code radio on our website. If you put in an order, um, when you're going through checkout, there's going to be an area where you can enter a promo code, enter code radio uh, for 15% off all products. And that's one that's going to be running th- till Friday. Um, but just wanted to be our way, you know, Friday, November 20th, but be our way to just say thank you for, for tuning in um, and listening. But the best way to do it and check us out is on, on our website, www.myalmacoffee.com. And that's where you can not only see, um, the products we offer, but then also get to see where some of our um, community partners are, where you can also buy the, buy coffee from and support two small businesses. So um, that's that's a neat way. Or, hey, if you're around the Holly Springs area, don't be afraid to stop on by, poke your head in. Once pandemics, you know, the pandemic's over, we'd love to start doing tours and events again. But until then, at least we got a little area that, that people can come pick up coffee from um, and grab something, especially if they're close. Well, color me there. I'm going to get out there as soon as practical. Harry, it has been an absolute delight having you on the show. Keep up the good work. Keep us posted. And I'm quite sincere. You and I are going to have a cup of coffee soon. I like it. That's a deal. Thank you, Stone. Yes, sir. All right. Until next time, this is Stone Payton for our guest today, Harry Hutchins with Alma Coffee and everyone here at the Business Radio X family saying we'll see you next time on Cherokee Business Radio.